to Horse Tales, the programme for anyone with an interest in anything equestrian. Well, today I've come to the heart of Gloucestershire to see one of the country's leading dressage riders, five times national champion, Olympic dressage rider, Carl Hester. But first, we meet up with a quite extraordinary horseman and his even more extraordinary partner. Would you, would you sit up now and show everybody how you get your bottle, how you drink your bottle before you go to bed? As one of the acts in a travelling equestrian theatre, Texas Ollie and Silver the Wonder Horse have travelled the world, keeping audiences in fits of laughter wherever they go. So, don't be drinking too much today, OK? Just a wee drink. <laughs> we'll just give them a wee drink a day, miss. But unlike many professional partnerships that go their separate ways when the curtain comes down at the end of the show, Ollie and Silver enjoy the most extraordinary relationship and are quite clearly devoted to each other. Oh, April, I miss you. Oh, April, I do. Oh, April, I love you. Do you love me too? Sometimes you were bitchy. Sometimes you were bad. But I treated all my dear. Or once we once had Ah, it's over! He's gonna roll. <laughs> Silver was a crazy three-year-old when I got him. And I bought him in a sale in Dungannon in Ireland for, to train for riding. But uh, I found out as time went on, Silver didn't want to be a riding horse. I was uh, going to sell him again because he was going to get m myself killed and Silver killed. And third time lucky I went back to him to try and ride him again and this day he tried to run off and get over a wall with me on him. And I had a little peak hat on and the hat fell off when Silver was trying to climb over the wall. I was trying to get him settled and get him back to the ground again. Then when I did get him settled I got off him and I looked at Silver and Silver looked at me. I said, Silver, that's it, I'm finished with you. I'm going to now sell you or shoot you. That's the true words. So when I said those words, Silver turned around, he went over to the corner of the wall and he picked the peak hat up. So I said, OK, Silver, you don't want to be a riding horse, you'll be a trick horse. And that's the way it's been ever since. We're going to ride around now, throw the blanket on, but he's such a big horse. I have to take a jump to get up on the mist. I'm self-taught. So I have to think up these things to try and uh, explain to Silver what I want him to do and after that it's, it's okay. Would you show everyone your big smile? The big smile. Oh, that was a big smile. <laughs> He's tired today. I used to go to bed trying to dream up things and I would dream about me and Silver. Maybe a film I seen you know, with a horse crossing his legs. They would come in my head and then I would try, try to, to do it the next day and work on it until we perfect it. Silver is a full-time job, but I got to really uh, start on another one for a stand-in, you know. And he'll be number two. He'll be silver number two, but this is number one. This is the master of them all. <laughs> Aren't you, sir? Yeah, he's too busy eating. Well, I've had some extraordinary opportunities on horse tails. I've ridden Zara Phillips's event horses. I've been jousting on a horse covered in armour. I've even been galloping racehorses up the gallops. But I think that today tops it all. Now, I feel like Lloyd Grossman. Come through the keyhole. Where are we today? We've got plaques showing international dressage performances. We've got trophies galore. We've got boots for long, skinny legs. Hey, and look who's making the tea. Five times national dressage champion and Olympic rider, Carl Hester. Hello, Carl. Morning, Alice. Tea or coffee? Carl Hester is one of Britain's leading dressage riders and a regular member of the national squad. He's an experienced Olympian, having represented Britain at the Barcelona, Sydney and Athens Olympics. And he's dominated the sport in this country for over a decade. Well, I come from Sark in the Channel Islands. And uh, when I was at school there, we had two ladies who had a holiday house there. 
and they came to the school and said if anyone was interested in working with horses that to come and see them at the end of the class. So I went and had a, a chat with them and that's how I ended up coming to England and a few years later then got the telephone call that changed my life really which came from Dr and Mrs Bexel Simon in Sirencester. So I went for an interview there and I turned up in a tiny little battered mini which I didn't even drive into the property I was so embarrassed I left it outside the gates went up the drive and of course there's an incredible setup which I'd only ever really heard about I mean fantastic stables indoor school outdoor school and these wonderful horses so I had my interview did my riding and uh, I remember at the end of it you know Dr Vector Simon said to me you know and how much would you like to get paid and I had, of course I had no idea I'd be paid as well <laughs> to ride these horses um, and I did get the job and that was when I was 22 and th that year, in my first year I was there, I actually was lucky enough to start on the British team at the World Championships and it was incredible really and then followed by the Barcelona Olympics with a great horse that they had called Giorgione. So isn't it quite unique for a top rider to have had so little experience before the age of 15? More extraordinary, I hadn't ridden a saddle either, you know, in Sark they aren't riding horses, they're working horses. Um, having said that, I think perhaps that helped towards my balance riding horses without saddles. And coming to England and progressing to a saddle actually wasn't as difficult as I expected it to be. So you hadn't actually ridden in a saddle till you were 15? Till I was 15, back. that's right, yes. What do you think makes you different? I mean, lots of people can ride okay on the flat, but what sets someone apart as a top international dressage rider? I think it is about balance and it's about achieving an independent seat. Now, that takes many years to develop, and I've been very fortunate in the start of my career. I mean, when I was at Dr. Bechtelsheimer's, I was having six lessons a day and riding without stirrups and constantly corrected until it just became part of my way of riding. When you're looking for a young horse to do dressage, what is it that makes a horse be able to do Grand Prix? It used to be just a quiet horse that wouldn't jump or wouldn't event, that would be a dressage horse, if it moved nicely, and of course that's not the case. At top level dressage, those top ten horses are very exciting horses to watch, and they're almost horses that are on the edge. So, personally for me, if I was looking for a young dressage horse, I really want something that shows a lot of flair, a lot of spark, a lot of movement, and a lot of presence really, because they need to have that at a young age if that's going to continue all the way through. And really it does boil down to this desire to go. And that's not everyone's cup of tea, and of course some people would rather have a horse that they're having to push along, and I'd rather have one that I'm having to slow down. Mm. And I think that those horses actually are the ones that make the top horses. How much does a top dressage horse actually cost? A top dressage horse could easily cost you over £500,000. Um, you don't, of course, don't have to pay that. You can, and my advice has always been, don't keep looking for someone else's horses, train your own. And I went out and bought, you know, foals, two-year-olds, cheap horses, and of course not all of them were going to make it to be top horses. In my life, you know, I've had a handful out of many, many horses that have been good enough to, to make that level. Escapado, who, of course, is my current horse, has given me many hours of pain, pleasure and fun and he's been extremely difficult of all the horses I've had. Okay Carl, come on, prove to us dressage isn't boring. If you think dressage is boring, come and watch Escapado and see what you think. Mm -hmm.